Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Indian government repeal farm laws that sparked uprising. 40,000 health workers hold sympathy strikes in the US. 20,000 metal workers in Spain strike for fair wages. And rising fuel prices hit Brazil's working class. In our first story, India's farmers have secured a key victory after a landmark year of struggle. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has announced that the government will repeal its three farm laws. Widely criticized for being pro-corporate, they were condemned by farmers as a death warrant. In a speech on November 19th, Modi stated that the formal rollback will begin in the winter session of the parliament, which is due to start next week. Celebrations broke out at Delhi's Singo, Ghazipur and Tikri border, some of the major sites of the ongoing farmer's sit-ins. The day was also marked by remembrances of over 700 people who died during the struggle. The farmers have survived sustained attempts by Modi's right-wing Bharatiya Janata Party to malign the protests. Right-wing propaganda claimed that the protests were funded by terrorist groups and led by separatists. Among the most serious attacks was the Lakhimpur Kheri massacre, where four farmers were killed by a convoy of vehicles linked to a BJP minister. The Communist Party of India Marxist has said that Prime Minister Modi must apologize for the dictatorial step of implementing the farm laws. Meanwhile, the United Farmers Front, or the SKM, has stated that this is not the end of the protests. Farm unions will continue the struggle until the laws are officially repealed and other key demands, including a minimum support price for produce, are met. Modi's decision came just days before massive rallies and events were planned to mark one year of protest on November 26th. It also comes close to state assembly elections in several states, including Punjab and Uttar Pradesh, considered to be among the epicenters of the protests. Next, we go to the US, where tens of thousands of health workers across California staged a walkout on November 18th. An estimated 40,000 Kaiser Permanente workers undertook the sympathy strike in solidarity with the company's 600 stationary engineers. These engineers have been on strike for 64 days, citing unfair labor practices and pay during contract talks. They are organized by the International Union of Operating Engineers. Thursday's sympathy strike included X-ray and surgical technicians, housekeepers, pharmacists and other medical staff. The protest action was organized by the members of SEIU's United Healthcare Workers West and local chapters of OPEIU and IFPTE. At least 20,000 members of the California Nurses Association will walk out in solidarity on November 19th. They will be joined by around 2,000 mental health workers who are members of the National Union of Healthcare Workers. The sympathy strikes on Thursday and Friday followed just days after Kaiser Permanente averted a major strike. Over 35,000 workers across the US were set to walk out on November 15th. However, last-minute tentative agreement was reached between Kaiser and the Alliance of Healthcare Unions. The four-year contract covers 50,000 workers across 22 local unions. It includes a 3% wage increase for the first two years and a 2% for the next two. The contract has also withdrawn a proposed two-tier wage system and no cuts will be imposed on family medical and dental coverage. The contract will be ratified by workers in the coming weeks. Next, we go to Spain, where around 20,000 workers in the metal sector have launched an indefinite strike. Members of the General Union of Workers, or the UGT, and CCOO walked out on November 16th. The strike has paralyzed industrial operation in Cadiz province. Workers have set up roadblocks and barricades restricting access to companies like Airbus, Navantia, Alestis, and Dragados. Unions have been negotiating with the Federation of Metal Entrepreneurs of Cadiz, or FEMCA, after the collective agreement expired on December 31, 2020. 
This covers not only large companies but also smaller mechanical workshops and maintenance companies among others. Cadiz province has the second highest rate of unemployment in Spain which companies have exploited for decades. The strike has also highlighted the poor working conditions of auxiliary workers including a lack of off days. Unions are demanding a pay rise of 2% in 2021, 2.5% in 2022 and 3% in 2023. Workers argue that these increases are needed given that the consumer price index has increased to 5.5%, the highest in 29 years. They have also asked for salary review clauses in the agreement in line with the cost of living. FEMCA has offered only a rise of 0.5% in the first year, followed by a 1.5% increase for the next two years of the contract. Workers are also fighting against attempts to extend the working day. Another round of negotiations was held on November 18th, but no agreement was reached. As the strike continues, riot police units have been deployed and at least one arrest has been reported so far. And finally, we bring you a video feature by Brazil de Fato on the impact of rising fuel prices on Brazil's working class. Let's have a look. The constant increase in fuel price affects Brazilian workers from all the economic sectors. To those who work in app platforms, to make ends meet became even harder. The price of one liter of gasoline in January, compared with that in October 2021, had an increase of 73%. I can't stand it anymore. The fuel is expensive, there are car turn-ups, it's hard. I'm still paying for the car I bought. Last year I was unemployed and had to pay the bills. I worked almost 12 hours per day. Today I started to work at 5 a.m. I used to profit, apart from the fuel and Uber expenses, $36 a day. Today I'm making $18 of profit, a 50% loss. Yesterday I filled up my car. It cost me $1.3 per liter. It's a domino effect. If the fuel price hikes, everything becomes expensive. The skyrocketing of fuel costs affects not only those who use cars or buses. Fishermen, who have rivers as their means of survival, are suffering the consequences of the economic policy adopted by the federal government. I'm from Marajá, the city of Cachoeira do Arari. Four people, me, my wife and my kids. The fuel prices increase too much. Our expenses increase too. In Marajá, it is nine reais per liter of gasoline. Before the recent rise in fuel prices, it was five reais, so the price almost doubled. We used it to charge $36 for the crossing. Now we are charging between $70 and $90. Sometimes it's even financially harmful to us to make this trip. The way it's going, I think it's going to get worse and worse. The difficulty faced by Davi and Vladimir is the same for all Brazilians. It is the result of a decision taken in 2016 by the government of former President Michel Temer. The Bolsonaro government maintained the decision. The so-called PPI, import parity price, links the fuel price in Brazil to the international market, even if the production is Brazilian. And the result is this. Fuel price increases every week, more expensive cooking gas and food. And unfortunately, you know that who pays for it is the population. And that's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.